Hi, my name is Paul Roberts, and I'm here today to talk to you about the most basic teaching of Shin Buddhism. And that teaching is the teaching that was given by Shakyamuni Buddha at a place called Vulture Peak. And what he did there was he answered a question by the monk Ananda, who was noticing that Shakyamuni seemed to be in a different state than he had ever been before, full of effulgence and, and divine light in a way that Ananda had never seen. And, and he asked Shakyamuni Buddha why this was so. Shakyamuni Buddha praised Ananda for the question. He asked him if it was given to him by some divine being or God. And Ananda said, no, this was a question that just came to him of his own accord. And then Shakyamuni said, I'm going to explain what's going on and the answer I give is going to be beneficial to countless people. And so then he begins to describe a history going back a long, long ways, going back actually before the Big Bang, if you want to put it in years, I'll talk more about that in a little bit, and the procession of 53 past Buddhas, who he named one at a time. And then finally he said there was a Buddha who arose, a Buddha in a flesh body, named Lokish Vararaja. And let me read you what Shakyamuni said here. Then appeared a Buddha named Lokish Vararaja, the Tathagata, Arhat, perfectly enlightened one, possessed of wisdom and practice, perfected one, knower of the world, unsurpassed one, tamer of men, Master of gods and men, Buddha and world honored one. And at that time there was a king who, having heard the Buddha's exposition of the Dharma, rejoiced in his heart and awakened aspiration for the highest perfect enlightenment. He renounced his kingdom and the throne and he became a monk named Dharmakara. Having superior intelligence, courage, and wisdom, he distinguished himself in the world. He went to see the Tathagata Lokeshvara Raja, knelt down at his feet, walked around him three times, keeping him always on his right, prostrated himself on the ground, and putting his palms together, praised the Buddha with various verses. And then he praises the Buddha. Shakyamuni tells us what he said. And then he declares his own aspiration, which is his own aspiration to become a Buddha himself. He then makes his 48 vows according to Shakyamuni Buddha, which of course form the basis for our school's teaching, the teaching of Shin Buddhism or Jodo Shinshu. And after making those vows, he said this, I have made vows unrivaled in all the world. I will certainly reach the unsurpassed way. If these vows should not be fulfilled, may I not attain perfect enlightenment. And he goes on to say many other things, which I'm leaving out for the sake of time in this video. And finally, he concludes with this. If these vows are to be fulfilled, let this universe of a thousand million worlds shake in response, and let all the divas in heaven rain down rare and marvelous flowers. And then Shakyamuni Buddha said to Ananda, As soon as the monk Dharmakara spoke these verses, the entire earth shook in six ways, and a rain of wonderful flowers fell from the heaven, scattering everywhere. Spontaneous music was heard, and a voice in the sky said, Surely you will attain the highest perfect enlightenment. Then the monk Dharmakara kept all these great vows which were sincere, unfailing, and unsurpassed in the whole world, and intensely aspired to attain nirvana. Then Ananda, Shakyamuni Buddha continues, after proclaiming and establishing those universal vows in the presence of the Buddha Lokeshvara Raja, the monk Dharmakara was solely intent on producing a glorious and exquisite land. The Buddha land which he sought to establish was vast in extent, unsurpassed and supremely wonderful, always present and subject neither to decay nor change. 
During inconceivable and innumerable kalpas, he cultivated the immeasurable meritorious practices of the Bodhisattva path. He did not harbor any thought of greed or hatred or cruelty, nor did he allow any ideas of greed, hatred, or cruelty to arise. He was unattached to any form, sound, smell, taste, touch, or idea. Possessed of the power to persevere, he did not avoid undergoing various afflictions. Having little desire for his own sake, he knew contentment. Without any impure thought, enmity, or stupidity, he dwelt continually in tranquil samadhi. His wisdom was unobstructed, and his mind free of falsehood and deceitfulness. With an expression of tenderness in his face, and with kindness in his speech, he spoke to others in consonance with their inner thoughts. Courageous and diligent, strong-willed and untiring, he devoted himself solely to the pursuit of the pure Dharma, thereby benefiting a multitude of beings. He revered the three treasures, respected his teachers and elders, and thus adorned his practice with a great store of merits. By doing so, he enabled sentient beings to partake of it. Wherever he was born, an immeasurable stock of treasure spontaneously appeared as he wished. He taught countless sentient beings and guided them on the path of highest true enlightenment. He was reborn as a rich man, a lay devotee, a member of the highest caste of a noble family, a Kastriya king, a wheel-turning monarch, a king of one of the six heavens in the world of desire, or even higher as a Brahma king. He revered and worshipped all Buddhas by making the four kinds of offerings to them. The merit he thus described, he thus acquired, was indescribably great. Fragrance issued from his mouth as from a blue lotus flower, and every pore of his body emitted the scent of sandalwood, which permeated innumerable worlds. His appearance was majestic, and his physical characteristics and marks were truly wonderful. From his hands, inexhaustible treasures, clothes, food, and drink, rare and exquisite flowers and incense, silken canopies, banners, and other ornaments were produced. In such manifestations he was unrivaled among all heavenly and human beings. He thus attained the command of all dharmas. So we see here that Shakyamuni Buddha is sharing the spiritual biography of Dharmakara and telling us how Dharmakara ultimately became the greatest of all the great bodhisattvas, a truly supernatural being. And then later in the exchange, Ananda asks Shakyamuni this about Dharmakara. Ananda asked the Buddha, has the bodhisattva Dharmakara already attained Buddhahood and then passed into Nirvana? Or has he not yet attained Buddhahood? Or is he dwelling somewhere at present? The Buddha replied to Ananda, now listen to this. The Bodhisattva Dharmakara has already attained Buddhahood and is now dwelling in a western Buddha land called peace and bliss, a hundred thousand kotis of lands away from here. And Ananda further asked the Buddha, how much time has passed since he attained Buddhahood? And the Buddha rep replied, since he attained Buddhahood, about ten kalpas have passed. Now a kalpa is about 6.7 billion years. So Shakyamuni Buddha was saying to Ananda that it's been about 67 billion years since Ananda has attained Buddhahood. Now, our scientists are only able to look back in space and time up to what they call the Big Bang, which they're guessing took place about 12 billion years ago. The Buddha, with his perfect knowledge of all things, he's able to tell us about things that happened before the Big Bang even took place. To us, it's inconceivable, but that's only because we're ignorant and we have such limited tools in order to try to understand these things. And now I want to read to you the very most important part 
in my opinion, of this uh, discussion, this sermon, this sutra. The Buddha said to Ananda, Rise to your feet, rearrange your robes, put your palms together, and respectfully revere and worship Amitayas, that's Amida Buddha, Buddhas and Tathagatas in the lands of the Ten Quarters always praise with one accord that Buddha's virtues of non-attachment and unimpeded activity. And so Ananda stood up, rearranged his robes, assumed the correct posture, faced westward, and demonstrating his sincere reverence, joined his palms together, prostrated himself on the ground, and worshipped Amitayas. Then he said to the Buddha Shakyamuni, World-honored one, I wish to see that Buddha, his land of peace and bliss, and its hosts of bodhisattvas and shravakas. As soon as he had said this, Amitayas emitted a great light, which illuminated all the Buddha lands, the encircling adamantine mountains, Mount Sumeru, together with large and small mountains, and everything else shone with the same golden color. The light was like the flood at the end of the period of cosmic change that fills the whole world when myriads of things are submerged and as far as the eye can see there is nothing but a vast expanse of water. Even so was the flood of light emanating from Amitayas. All the lights of Shravakas and Bodhisattvas were outshone and surpassed, and only the Buddha's light remained shining bright and glorious. At that time, Ananda saw the splendor and majesty of Amitayas resembling Mount Sumeru, which rises above the whole world. There was no place which was not illuminated by the light emanating from the body of glory. The four groups of followers of the Buddha in the assembly saw all this at the same time, and likewise those of the pure land saw everything in this world. Now Renya Shonin, the second great teacher of Shin Buddhism, said this, There are some who are learned in the scriptures, but are ignorant of them, while there are others who are ignorant of the scriptures, but understand them. Even if you do not know a single character of the scriptures, if you get someone to read the scriptures to other, to others, and then you lead them to acquire Shinjin, you are one of those who are ignorant of the scriptures, but understand them. And even if you are learned in the scriptures, but you do not read them in depth and sincerity, without appreciating the Dharma, you are one of those who are learned in the scriptures, but are ignorant of them. So I encourage you, if you're a sincere inquirer, to listen deeply to the Dharma. That is the only practice in Shin Buddhism. Shakyamuni Buddha, the Bodhisattva Nagarjuna, all the rest of the great seven Pure Land Masters and the other Pure Land Masters, Master Shinrin and Master Renyo all believed and all spoke about the reality of Amida Buddha as a true Buddha, an individuated being of consciousness, just the way Shakyamuni describes in his dialogue with Ananda. There are those who say that Amida is not a real Buddha. There are those who say Amida is a principle or a metaphor or a mythic character or some other sort of explanation along those lines, these people are not speaking Dharma truth. They may be very sincere in what they're saying, but they are ignorant and deluded. They simply don't know because their eyes have not yet been opened to the reality of the great Buddha Amida. I encourage you to listen to the Dharma with your head, with your intellect, and with your heart, and ask the Buddha within whether or not Amida Buddha is a real Buddha. I wish you all the best, and I'll speak to you again in another video.